thermodynamics is the branch of physics that applies probability theory to the study of thermodynamics. Statistical thermodynamics is also called statistical mechanics. Statistical thermodynamics provides a way to relate the microscopic properties of atoms and molecules to the macroscopic world by providing a molecular level interpretation of thermodynamic quantities. Probability theory is the branch of mathematics dealing with the probability and analysis of random phenomena. It deals with the probability of events occurring. In thermodynamics, it shows what is likely and even what is possible. Coins are a common starting point in probability theory. This is because each coin has two sides, commonly called head and tail. What makes coins so useful in probability theory is that they can be flipped with an equal chance of getting each result. One coin has two possibilities, one head and one tail. Two coins have four possibilities, one of two heads, two of one head and one tail, and one of two tails. Three coins have eight possibilities, one set of three heads, three sets of two heads and one tail, three sets of one head and two tails, and one set of three tails. Four coins have 16 possibilities, one set of four heads, four sets of three heads and one tail, six sets of two heads and two tails, four sets of one head and three tails, and one set of four tails. Note the pattern. One coin has two possible outcomes, two coins have four possible outcomes, Three coins have eight possible outcomes, and four coins have 16 possible outcomes. And it turns out that n coins would have two to the nth power possible outcomes. Extending this to similar situations where each try has an independent outcome, the result in p equals x to the nth power, where x is the number of possible outcomes for each try, n is the number of independent tries, and p is the total number of possible outcomes of a given number of tries. When the possibilities are not independent, the situation is a little different. With dependent outcomes, once one is used, the number of available outcomes changes. Consider a room with five chairs, and five people come in to the room and sit down. The first person that comes into the room has five choices as to where to sit. However, the second person that comes into the room has only four choices as to where to sit, since one seat is occupied. Now the third person that comes into the room has only three choices as to where to sit, since two seats are now occupied. Furthermore, when the fourth person comes into the room, they have only two choices as to where to sit, since three seats are now occupied. Finally, unfortunately, the poor fifth person that comes into the room has only one seat left and no choices as to where to sit, since all other seats are now occupied. To get the total number of ways that people can sit in the room, we need to multiply the number of choices available to each of them. If the number of possible arrangements is labeled as P, then we get P equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals 120. This is called the factorial, which is designated as N factorial. In this case, we have 5 factorial, which equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals 120. The general case is n factorial equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and so on, all the way down to 1. In simple cases such as this one, with two independent outcomes, over the long haul, they tend to balance out. This occurs even with larger numbers of possibilities. In more complicated situations, a bell-shaped structure is produced.
This bell-shaped structure ends up approaching something like this, as the number of tries gets extremely large. It is also the pattern of the breakdown of the probability of patterns within specific cases. Statistical entropy is based on the probability of molecular position, most often resulting from molecular motion. The tendency of entropy to increase, seen in the second law of thermodynamics, is a result of the fact that high entropy configurations are more probable than low entropy configurations. A common example is a gas in a half-plug container. When the plug is removed, it is highly improbable that all of the gas would remain on one side. The overwhelmingly more probable situation is that the gas gets evenly distributed between both halves of the container. This is what is actually observed to occur. Entropy is related to probability by the fact that more probable conditions have more possible ways to occur than less probable ones. The number of possible ways for a given condition to occur is denoted as omega. Entropy is denoted as S, and K is the Boltzmann's constant. And the relationship between entropy and the number of possible ways for a given condition to occur is S equals K times the natural logarithm of omega. The fact that entropy is related to the number of possible configurations of a system is why it can be considered a measure of the degree of disorder in a system. Statistical thermodynamics provides a way to study molecular motion. It shows how that motion affects the macroscopic world. It also shows how that motion affects the law of thermodynamics. Statistical analysis of the zero law shows that molecular motion would spread evenly between connected systems, putting them all in equilibrium. Statistical analysis of the first law shows that molecular motion moves energy around without losing it. Statistical analysis of the second law shows that molecular motion tends to put systems into their most probable arrangement, which is, by definition, the arrangement with the highest entropy. Statistical analysis of the third law shows that molecular motion has a minimum value, but it also shows that absolute zero cannot actually be reached. In conclusion, statistical thermodynamics shows us why the laws of thermodynamics work the way they do. It connects the microscopic and macroscopic worlds in a way nothing else can do. It shows why entropy tends to increase as well as how and when it can be decreased.